Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's episode, Growing Gratitude. I'm going to start a little bit differently with a dramatic reading from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory by Raul Dahl. The scene I'm going to read is when Willy Wonka has all of the children in his chocolate factory and he has introduced them to his um, workers, the Oompa Loompas. And Veruca Salt, the very spoiled little girl, has decided that she has to have an Oompa Loompa. Daddy, shouted Veruca Salt, the girl who got everything she wanted. Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. I want you to get me an Oompa Loompa. I want an Oompa Loompa right away. I want to take it home with me. Go on, Daddy, get me an Oompa Loompa. Now, now, my pet, her father said to her, we mustn't interrupt Mr. Wonka. But I want an Oompa Loompa, screamed Veruca. All right, Veruca, all right, but I can't get it for you this second. Please be patient. I'll see you have one before the day is out. So if you're a parent, you would be horrified if your child came even close to Veruca Salt's spoiled behavior. So I thought during the Thanksgiving season, we might take a show and talk about how we as parents can foster a spirit of gratitude in our children as well as in our family life. And my guest tonight is Una Berry. She is the head of school of the Montessori School of Greater Hartford, right here in West Hartford. She is not only a registered nurse in Ireland, but she has over 32 years of experience of working with all sorts of children as well as their parents. And she has been a great parenting resource to me. So Una, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. So let's start our conversation on a developmental level. So. Mm -hmm. What should we be expecting from our children as far as appreciating the things around them, the things they have? Well, we know that children from about the age of from zero to six years old, somewhere around six years old, are very much um, um, self-centered, if for want of a better way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, their job in life is to, to construct themselves, to create the person they're going to be. So they're not terribly focused on others and on, on being grat um, um, grateful for anything. They're very much focused on themselves. Um, so, but that does not mean that we don't create the foundation for an attitude of feeling grateful for what they have and what's around them. So we shouldn't expect that they're just naturally going to be appreciative and grateful, but we should make sure that we foster those feelings. Absolutely. And how Absolutely. we do that. <laughs> what I, I, my, the parents in our school is, are tired of listening to me saying, <laughs> you're the model. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I said the children are in a, in a, in a phase of self-construction between zero and six. Well. It often you have to have plans for self-construction, you have to have a model for self-construction. Well, you as the parents, the adults in their life, they are the models for those children. They are looking and watching at everything that you do, everything, even the tiny little things that you don't think they see, they are seeing everything. And they mm -hmm. are really modeling how they behave, how they respond, and what you do. So it's up to us. It's not, it's not that we have spoiled children. Well, although we could, we could, our model could be to make them be more spoiled versus oh, absolutely. Yes. appreciative. Yes, yes. So, um, so what would that modeling look like? like? What kinds of things should we do to, I mean, we all think that we're grateful and we're appreciative and we're thankful, but maybe we're not doing such a good job of <laughs> modeling that. <laughs> 
you know, I, to, to kind of give a really good foundation to this, I have to go back a little bit. Okay. Um, children reflect how they are treated. So one of the things that you have to start off with right from the get-go with your young child is uh, affording them the respect that you would wish to have for yourself. So if you start from a base of respect with, for your child and of paying attention to what they're doing, listening when they speak, now of course you can't listen to every single thing a three-year-old is saying because you would be listening all day, but to give as much attention as you can to how they think about things, looking for their opinion, you know, and paying attention when they ask. You know, we, a lot of us ask for opinions and then pay no attention and don't listen to what's said. And they know very well. They're very, very mm -hmm. capable of understanding that she doesn't really hear what I'm saying. So that's the start, is really giving your child the respect their due as just a human being, not for what they've done or what they've not done, but for just being. That's the start so of it. Really Making sure you're consciously doing that. Yes. Which, yes. you know, in our busy lives, it's a lot tough. of times we it's don't tough. realize that we're, yes. oh, yeah, they're talking at me again. I've got to make lunch or something. Absolutely. And here's, mm -hmm. here's the, the key, again, what I say to the parents all the time, is, you know, there are times absolutely that you're going to have to be rushing out the door in the morning or getting dinner in the evening or whatever. But at the other times when you're not on a schedule, mm -hmm. Be very conscious about slowing down. Just slow down and think about what's my priority now, right now. You know, is it more important for me to, um, you know, go out and rake the garden, or is it more important for me to actually really give my child the time to let them understand that I am hearing what they're saying? You can do it while you're raking the garden, but mm -hmm. your child needs to know that you have time for them and that you respect what they have to say. That's really the key to, to so much of parenting. Mm -hmm. That's the start of, parent, of, of anything in parenting. And then giving them the time to appreciate what they appreciate. You appreciate what they appreciate. Be grateful for the things that they are doing. You know, you, when your child does something that is um, kind, that is, um, goes, they go out of their way to do, mm -hmm then you don't have, we don't want tons of praise and what a wonderful person you are and how great you are. And mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely counterproductive, actually. But what you do want to do is acknowledge it. Thank you. That was kind. Very simply and carefully. And your child will not take on the whole um, thing of, oh, so I get tons of attention and, and I got mom's total um, um, gratitude when I did this so right. I'll do it again just to get her gratitude that's not okay. what you want to do mm -hmm. what you want to tr do is is try and, and foster a feeling in your child of doing something because it's the right thing to do and because it is kind and because it's helping somebody else so don't make a, a big deal like overdo it but no. just a simple just a simple you practicing thankful yes. that you appreciate that behavior and a, a genuine acknowledgement right. you know you don't have to 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 act or or put on a show just be genuinely mm -hmm. grateful for something that your child has done you know they help you to um, take all the groceries out of the out of the car thanks that was a big help so That's one of the books I, when I do these shows, I do, if it's a show that requires research, I read all sorts of things. And one of the books I read talked about being grateful is really something you have to practice and you have to be very conscious about it so that it becomes a habit. And mm -hmm. I think, again, because we're so rushed, we don't take the time to say those things. And frequently, we may think it or we might tell someone else, oh, my child did the best thing. But we aren't actually telling the person who did it mm -hmm. that they did a great thing. So. After doing all of this, the other day I was um, bringing my older daughter, Abby, to um, a party. And she had a bunch of stuff in the car. And, you know, sometimes siblings are like, oh, I don't want to help her. And, you know, they get into that. And my younger daughter, Meg, Abby got out of the car. She got, you know, what she could handle. And without being asked, Meg said, oh, I'll carry that for you, which sometimes is a big deal because mm -hmm. siblings, you know how siblings are. <laughs> And so I said, you know, that was really sweet of you. And you could tell she didn't, she was like trying not to smile, but she felt good about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if we do things like that more often, then like you said, they might think, well, I'm going to make the choice that 
mom would appreciate versus maybe yes. the other choice, which isn't so And, much and remember, you don't want them to be doing it because mom would appreciate it. Right. You want them to be doing it because they know it's a kind thing to do, it's helpful, it's supportive of other people. Mm -hmm. So th that's the fine line that you have to yeah. be very careful about, that you are not making it be a judgment on your part, that it's only okay when mom says I, she's grateful. Right. I'll do it even when mom isn't there. That's what you want to have. So how do you... How do you get there? I mean, how do you, it, it, like you said, it's a fine line. So what is... It's a very fine line. And you start off by, remember, go back to being the model. You mm -hmm. model it yourself in your life. You let your child see you being grateful for something that was done okay. or commenting on, wow, wasn't that very kind of that person to do that? Or, hey, let's help this, this person over here. They really need our help. And that, okay. you're, that you're, you're doing it in your own life and you're doing it, you know, a lot of times we do things with our children um, things like making decisions, um, going through a process of something. And we mm -hmm. do it internally. We, our children aren't seeing the process we're going through. And I think there's great value in actually being conscious of those processes that you're going through and actually doing them out loud for your child. You know, helping a child to walk through how to make a decision out loud. Helping your child to understand what it is to be grateful or what it is to be to notice that somebody needs help and to just act on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so just do it in your daily life. Find little moments to um, note when somebody needs, has done something wonderful and that you just comment on it. Again, you're not going to do the bells and whistles and the having mm -hmm. a party and all of that. <laughs> just a comment. Wow, wasn't that kind? That was, that was very kind of somebody to do that. I would be very grateful if they had done that for me. So it's bringing it to a conscious level. A conscious level. level. The other thing just, is, yeah. you know, um, when children receive things, you know, that, that you make a conscious effort to, to support them in, in, in being grat grateful, if you like, in, a, in a, a socially acceptable way, for want of putting it a better way. Um, you know, that, they, that you say, oh, that was a really wonderful gift that Aunt so-and-so gave you. Let's write a card to thank her. I bet she'd love to get a card. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and let's talk, think about how did it make you feel when you got it? You know, what are you going to do with it? A genuine thank you, a genuine examination of themselves of what difference this made to me. You know, I got this right. wonderful gift and this is how it's, I'm going to use it or what I'm going to do with it. So it's it more than it. just, well, we have to write a thank you note. It's really, again, taking the time to reflect on why you're thanking that person yes. and yes. what that gift meant to you or, yes. or thinking about what they went through. Yeah, it's really looking a little bit you. below the surface and, and, and not necessarily just taking everything in and, and, and accepting it without even any thought relative to it at all. I think right. it's really helping your child to understand the significance of getting something rather than the thing itself. So what about, um, you know, I as a mom am guilty of, you know, gosh, I cook dinner and, you know, everybody eats it and they rush off and there's no thank you for dinner. Although my husband's very good at saying thank you for dinner. So now my children are very, they, they have a ritual where they go, one, two, three, thank you, mommy, <laughs> for this wonderful dinner. And that's all my husband. He's, he's, he's a good person when it comes to gratitude. But what about that? Like ha appreciating, you know, what the work that goes into making a dinner or appreciating the fact that someone, um, you know, gave them a ride to a piano lesson or whatever it might be. How do you, so beyond things, like giving a physical, a thank you for physical things, what about the appreciation of the almost intangibles. Well, it's the lot of the mom to be unappreciated <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. <Shoot>. Because, <laughs> because um, you know, it's your respons responsibility right. to, it's your to do what you do, and it's your job, That's and, true. and, and um, your children, it's, it's their due, if right. you want. Um, however, one of the best ways to have children appreciate and understand what has gone into work or what has gone into something that, that has been provided to them is to help them to be a part of that. You know, in, in school, parents will say all the time, how come they'll eat vegetables in here and they will, I can't get them to eat anything that's remotely green at home. Well, the that children... That is true. <laughs> yeah. The children have been heavily involved in preparing that green thing. Okay. So they're very happy to eat it. And what you'll do is help the children to be a part of what's going on. You know, we talked a little bit before, I remember we chatted about mm -hmm. something um, about vacations. Yes. You know, 
get your child involved in preparing, in getting ready for that vacation, in, in choosing, in deciding where you're going. It doesn't mean they make the decisions, but it means that they are a part of the decision making. They, they uh, get to be listened to, they get to think about what's going to happen, they get to anticipate, right. you know, and you, and you talk to them about, let's think what we're going to do and how wonderful it's going to be and what would be your favorite thing. And then you talk about that when you come back and you talk about, wow, I was really happy to do that. That was really wonderful. Thank you for your company. So you're, you're, you're modeling gratefulness to them. What mm -hmm. was your favorite thing and what are you thankful for? So you have a conversation. It doesn't right. mean that you expect every sing single time for your children to come out, thank you, mom, for that. That is, that's often turns out to be insincere. It often um, is done just by rote, just simply because they know it's expected. Again, we're going back mm -hmm. to that. Right. You know, doing it because um, it's sincere and not because somebody else expects you to do it. So um, what about, so you're, make, you're making me remember back when, um, you know, parents will frequently say, you know, well, make sure you say thank you or make sure you, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, we took you out to dinner. What do you say? You yes. know, prompting yes, yes. the thank you. Is that wrong? Yes. Well, here's the thing. I think it's very socially acceptable for children to be polite and say thank you and mm -hmm. whatever. And right, I it's think kind of etiquette. It's etiquette, absolutely. Right. And I think in your child's best interest, mm -hmm. it is, even though maybe sometimes it's not terribly sincere, <laughs> um, I think it is in your child's best interest to to little, let's say, just learn that little etiquette for themselves in order to um, to just really be, if you like, socially acceptable in their, mm -hmm. in, to function in, their in society, function society. Yes. acceptably. Yeah. And also, you know, um, a lot of, of um, a lot of people really have a problem with children not being verbally grateful mm -hmm. um, for things. So you don't want your child to, to feel be slighted. Out yeah. Yes. And you don't want your child to be in a position where they're they're thought badly of because the fact mm -hmm. that they just didn't say thank you. So you want to help them to understand that that's something that is socially acceptable. Okay. However, um, if, you, if you develop the, the, um, a true sincerity in other um, parts of their lives with regard to understanding and accepting and appreciating what is mm -hmm. they, they have, then that will be a natural outgrowth of it. But I think okay. you do so initially you do it has to be yeah. a little bit of rote for them and, okay. and, and, and a little nudge to but but when you're asking your child to say thank you about something, try to say um, it would be it would be nice to say thank you for and, exp and, and, and sharing reiterate. their home with you, or, or, yes. or, or taking the time to right. drive you. You know, um, she missed her TV program the tonight because she she right. chose to drive you instead. So that was really kind of her. So it's more know? than just say thank you. It's yeah. say thank you because this yes. person yes. did something for you yes. or took time or whatever it uh, might be. Please say say thank you. It would be she would right. be appreciate if you thanked right. her because she did this. So now, what about? Um, I, I also, in addition to reading lots of things, I surveyed some friends about, you know, how do you try and instill, a, you know, grateful appreciation in your children. And um, one woman said that at the holiday times, it usually ends up happening at the holiday times, she has a party where her um, daughters invite some friends over and they bring sort of a very inexpensive, under $5 grab bag gift, but then they also are asked to bring a, like a Toys for Tots mm. gift with no limit and then they deliver them to the Toys for Tots location. Um, that kind of goes along the lines of thinking of show children that they have so much and that some people don't. Uh -huh. um, that I guess would go along with like volunteering at a yes. food pantry or whatever. Yes. So is that appropriate? Is that is there an age where that's not appropriate? Is that a good thing to do? Is it, it depends on how it's done? Is there done. a good way to do it? Yes, yeah. it depends so on good very much it. on how it's done. Mm -hmm. Because if mom goes out, buys a toy, and hands it to the child as she's walking the door to the party and says, "Here, that's your your gift," then it has absolutely no, no impact for mm -hmm. that child whatsoever. That that's yes. pretty obvious. So I think what is very impactful for a child is to be brought into the process and really consciously think about, you know, I have many toys in my closet. Um, Mom has a chat and says, let's go look at your toys and see some of the toys that you really loved and enjoyed mm -hmm. when you were three. Okay. And let's see if we can pick a really wonderful one for a little three-year-old who may not have that toy and who may not be able to get other toys. Mm -hmm. So 
pull your child into the process, talk to them about it. How do you think this child, your, this child will play with it? Do you remember when you played with it? You know, that you make right. it really be it's meaningful. A meaningful for the child. Mm -hmm. it's, that's what it's all about. You know, you can, you can do this all by rote. You can do it in a very superficial way with children and it will not stick. It will yeah, not it stick. It will anything. just. Yeah, it will not mean anything for them. They will not carry it into their lives. It will not have any impact. But mm -hmm. you can do it in such a way that not. You know, you want to be very careful that you're not um, drumming into your child. You should be grateful. How grateful you are! Right. Wonderful. You're you so know, lucky. You're you so know, lucky. You're so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that doesn't do anything. Because right. that's, well, that's that's. That can, can do damage in the other end of things, you know, because there are things that your child, by virtue of just being born and being a person mm -hmm. and being your, your child, um, is entitled to, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they're entitled to your love, they're entitled to your respect, they're entitled to your attention, you know, and, and yes, absolutely, as they grow older and become adults, they will understand that, wow, I was so lucky. You know, mm -hmm. We all do that. Wow, how I was, how lucky yeah. I was that I had such a great mom and dad, and that you know, because they see around them many people who do not have that. But the other things in their lives, the stuff, you know, the mm -hmm. the um, that that's more obviously a place to show your child how to to be grateful in the early years, um, and and it is like I said by truly making it a meaningful thing for them, talking about it, get asking them about their experiences relative to that thing and why they appreciated it and how giving it to others or sharing it with others will help others appreciate right. it and, how, and, and the difference it will make in their lives. You know, talk, mm -hmm. That's a big thing, talking about how the impact something will have on other people. So and thinking beyond so themselves. They can be, they right. can see, look beyond themselves, because right. that's what gratitude is all about, looking beyond right. yourself. And, and gratitude starts with empathy, mm -hmm. you know. And, and children, even though children are not born, born being gratitude, infants are born empathetic. Research has shown that infants will, will cry when other children cry. You know, they're, so we naturally, they're naturally feel empathetic. for others yeah. around us. And I think what you can do in your life as a parent with your child is is to, to develop, to nurture that empathetic side of your child. You know, draw attention to, mm -hmm. wow, you know, in the grocery store, somebody is, um, somebody snaps at you or isn't very kind to you or, um, you know, you can, you can say, wow, I, I wonder, did he have a hard day? Right, so You know, rather than that, being yeah. negative and nasty about it, you're encouraging your child to really think beyond that behavior that they just saw. And, and, and there might be a reason yes, for it. Absolutely. Yes, or why some, you know, yes. We have yeah. those conversations a lot if a child's mean to them. Well, maybe, or maybe, you know, or, you know, maybe they're grumpy or they're a bully or, you know, maybe yeah. there's a reason why they're behaving that way and no, it doesn't feel good. But, yeah, to yeah. think beyond. So encouraging your behavior, child rather right. than. Rather than um, the, the, the kind of first instinct would be, well, we'll stay away from that person. Right. You know, is that encourage them for their first in instinct to be, wow. I need to check up on that person and see if they're okay, you know, to, to make a right. connection rather than to pull away. Right. So that's the beginnings of, empathy is the beginnings of gratitude. Right, appreciation. So. Um, real quickly on the, um, you know, having something be meaningful when you're giving it, like a gift or something. Um, I, there was a conversation on kind of the gimmies that, that oh, children yeah. get. And one of the parents that I talked to, one of my friends said that, you know, she, will sometimes bring up, you know, you know, if a child says, well, I want to go out for ice cream. And the mom says, well, no, we're not going to go out for ice cream tonight. Oh, but I really, really want to, really want to. Well, if you have $15 to take us to ice cream, then, you know, we can go. To kind of have them appreciate that things cost money and mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and also the other side to that would be, you know, allowance where if you really want something, sometimes I'll say, well, you can use your own money for that. And then the kids maybe don't want it so much anymore when then they have yes. to pay for it themselves. Uh -huh. So is that kind of an appropriate, you know? There's a, just a sne tiny, weeny little bit of nastiness in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, no. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, every, every time you work with your child, every time you're, you're, you're talking with your child or, right. or working through something with your child, you have to be very careful about the messages you're sending to them. Because right. remember what I said at the very beginning, you are the model for your child. They, right. they reflect you, what you right. give out, right? Mm -hmm. so, so think about somewhat of the message that's there. You know, um, 
well, no, we can't have it, but we can have it if you, if you um, pay for it. You know, right. so, so it's like you're, you're, what you're saying is, well, I'm not going to pay for it, but you can pay for it. What's that message? And I'm going to let you think uh, well, about I that Well, I think yourself. the intent was more to express that, you know, things do cost money and you have to make choices. But, but there you are. You see, that's your yeah. intent. But what's your child hearing? Yeah, that's your child I hearing. Guess that's true. What you can do, it, what you can do, is say to have a conversation with your child, and just this is this is the, the, the approach that I would take mm -hmm. is is to say to them, I can I, I can see that you absolutely love ice cream. I can you know, and that you right. really want it now. And there's many times that I really really want something that I can't have, and you know what I try to do when that happens? Mm -hmm. I try to think, you know, I know I can't have that right now, but let me think what else I could do to make myself feel pretty good and yeah. feel, feel like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, and that's a way to help your child to, you know, when, when, we, when we're thinking about spoiling children, mm -hmm. it, you, you want to focus on, on the needs rather than the wants. That, that, right. that's avo right. that avoids yes. the spoiling piece of right. focusing on needs you rather than wants. You don't need it, you yeah. want it. And, and, yeah. But having a conversation with your child around that, but I really, really right. need it right now. Yeah. And you can say, you know, I, I know you, you really, really want it right now. I know you do, but this is not something we can do right now. Mm -hmm. Let's think about something else that would make you feel better, that would make you feel good. Okay. And, and, you know, I, again, I talk to the parents all the time about the gift you can give your child. One of the greatest gifts you can give your child is to help themselves understand how to make themselves feel better when mm -hmm. they have a problem with something or when they're, they don't okay. get what they need, you know, is to give them options. Let's think of other ways that you can help right. yourself feel good about whatever or feel better. Right. Okay. Even yeah. We're almost out of time. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it always goes so quickly. Yes, I have at does. least five other questions. Um, but before we go, I, we started with a spoiled child who didn't really behave the way we would like her to. Um, I do have a little clip of some children that are very grateful and are expressing the things that they're thankful for. So take a look. I'm thankful for a family that loves me. Um, being a good friend. Um, probably my stuffed animal. My dad and my mom because they help me with my homework and they help care for me. Go to the apple orchard and pick pumpkins and apples with my best friend. My family and friends. Animals. My friends. Um, I went apple picking with my cousin. My grandparents and my family. And my family? Going to my friend's house and playing. I like going to the fair and my uncle sang. I'm thankful that I live in the United States because the United States is a free country. Being able to be one of those persons that has a house and a family. I know that I am so thankful for you for watching the show and I am very thankful to Una for being not only my guest this evening but my parenting resource. <laughs> Thank you so much Una. You are very welcome. If you have additional questions for Una, you're curious about the Montessori School and want to get more information on that, you can go to www.msgh.org, yes. right? If you want more information about Life and Style with Sarah, you can go to my Facebook page under Life and Style with Sarah. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode where we are going to be creating gifts from the spice cupboard. Good night and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>